Twelve. Chosen. Do you know the way back to the road, Chieri? The cat leapt away and into the trees. Follow. Wait, she yelled, hurrying to catch up. I'm not as fast as you. No one is as swift as Chieri Raneth. Or as modest, I bet, she thought. Chieri dropped back to walk by her side, and Alex rested a hand on her back to steady herself as they negotiated the incline together. It felt exactly right, being with the cat like this, but she wondered what the others would say about it. They picked their way over the root-infested ground, but Alex didn't recognize anything. Are you sure this is the right way? Of course it is, Chieri said disdainfully. But it seems an awfully long way. I'm sure I didn't walk this far earlier. Chieri's rumbling growl and her sudden stillness were all the warning she needed that things were not right at the camp. She knelt on one knee beside the cat and tried to make out what was going on. Through the trees, she could make out the road and the camp just beyond it. Chieri had brought her back to her friends, but then she saw the two unfamiliar men. Soldiers. She watched them saddling the horses and loading the packs. Where were Douglas and the others? Could these two be some of the people who killed the Tinkers? She feared they might be. I don't know who they are, Chieri. I smell old blood. A lot of it. Many people were killed here. You don't smell any fresh blood, do you? No. That relieved some of her anxiety, but not all. If her friends were safe, where were they? They wouldn't have left her behind, not voluntarily at least. She watched the men at their chores and tried to decide what to do. What would Douglas do? That was easy. He would take out his sword and confront the men to demand answers. She couldn't do that. She didn't have a sword or any other weapons. Wait. She had the web. Can you knock one of them down? I don't know if they're enemies or not. So can you just hold him? Easily. I don't want to kill anyone, she warned, trying to project her thoughts with a stern edge to them. Just hold him down while I deal with the other. Then tell him not to struggle. Shieri moved silently away, circling the camp. When she was close enough, she pounced on the man farthest from the horses. Alex couldn't believe how fast she was. The man screamed and fell under the snarling cat, trying to fend her off. The horses erupted in panic, trying to pull away from where the danger lay, but the ropes were securely tied and they couldn't get free. They stamped and tugged to no avail. As soon as the cat made her move, Alex reached out to the web through her link to Shieri and captured the other man. The sword in his hand fell from suddenly nerveless fingers. With a thought, she put him to sleep. He dropped on the spot, and she ran into the camp. She stared down at the sleeping man. Never had it been so easy to push someone. The guilt hit her then, making her shake. What was happening to her? What was she becoming? Shieri's snarling growls snapped her back to the present. Stop struggling or she'll rip your throat out, she said, trying to make her voice sound threatening and not as shaky as it really was. The cat had him by the throat already, so he believed her. He went still. Let him up, Shieri, but watch him close. With a last snarl, the cat backed up. The man touched his throat and wiped Shieri's drool from his skin. He looked at his fingers, checking for blood, and found none. Relief blossomed on his face. He watched the cat warily, but when she made no further move toward him, he sat up. He searched the camp with his eyes, not daring to stand, and found his friend lying motionless not far away. His eyes darkened at the sight. Don't worry about him. He's just sleeping. You should start worrying about yourself. We mean you no harm, my lady. I'll be the judge of that, if you don't mind. Who are you? He gestured at his tunic. 
It was a flamboyant red with two rows of golden buttons running down the front. If it was supposed to mean something, it was entirely lost on her. Her eyes lingered upon the bugle he carried, hanging from a white braided cord looped across his chest. He was a soldier. She had already known that. But on what side? If he was Wallace's man, Douglas could be a prisoner, and her friends with him. So you wear red. Does that mean something? I want answers. But all know the colors have done more, he said in confusion. She sighed. All right, let's start with simpler questions. Name. He climbed to his feet, keeping a wary eye on Shieri, straightened his tunic, and came to attention. I am Flynn. Second day relancers at your service, my lady. He placed his right palm over his heart and bowed. It is my honor to serve the goddess and her chosen daughters. He means you, chosen. You are a daughter of the mother. Her jaw dropped at Shieri's explanation. Flynn took it as a sign she didn't believe him. He hurried to reassure her. Escorting the Duke and the Reverend Mother, blessings upon her, is a very great honor. My regiment won the right at the last games. It was a close thing. She raised a hand to cut him off. It was too much information too soon. Now that she had time, she could tell he was very young, certainly no older than mid-teens. Why are you here and not with your duke? The Reverend Mother, he began, but something behind her distracted him. Shieri growled and moved to stand between her and a new threat. Alex saw a flash of red moving through the trees, but before she could think of running, Douglas stepped out of the woods and into the light. Relief suddenly turned to fear as Shieri charged to attack. Shieri, no! He's a friend! She screamed. Shieri tried to stop and went down, going tail over nose, yowling in complaint at the undignified tumble. She got back to her feet, shook herself free of leaves and dirt, and growled angrily. Douglas had drawn his sword and moved between her and Alex. The red-coated soldier, eyes intent and wary, circled to get behind Shieri with his saber ready for mayhem. Alex threw herself onto her knees next to Shieri. You leave her alone. If you try anything, I'll do something to you. Come away, Alex, Douglas cried, shocked by her sudden move. Our cats are not like the ones you know. That's not Katie. She rolled her eyes. Duh, I can tell the difference. Shieri belongs to me, and I belong to her. The soldier straightened at hearing that, then sheathed his saber. He stepped away and circled wide around them to rejoin Douglas. He whispered something to him, and Alex narrowed her eyes. What were they up to? She couldn't hear what they said to each other, but Douglas sheathed his sword. That was an improvement. The soldier bowed. I am Captain Arlen, Lady Alex. My men and I will escort you and your friends to Ilsehaven. Just call me Alex. Everyone does. I would be honored to do so. Arlen sounded as if she'd done him a favor. Perhaps she had. She didn't know Ennery's customs, but Douglas had always been informal. Maybe that was just his way. Where is Ilsehaven? she asked. And why would you want to escort us there? And what about Shieri? I'll not leave her behind. Arlen patted the air as if to soothe her. Ilsa Haven is a river town not far from here, and you're familiar as welcome to come, of course. She's my chosen, and I am hers. She told me so. They are very insistent about that, or so I hear. Only daughters of the mother call a familiar their chosen, Douglas said. Does she really speak to you? She nodded firmly. You're bonded then. You're absolutely certain. What's wrong with that? Shieri and I do talk, and we are linked, but it's not a bad thing. It's wonderful. I'm sure it is, Douglas said sadly. 
He didn't sound sure, but before she could pursue it, he turned and walked away. She watched him go, feeling his pain, but not what caused it or what to do about it. He was shielding his thoughts. She decided to let him alone for a while. It wasn't as if she couldn't weasel it out of him on the journey. They had plenty of time to talk. Flynn, sound recall, Harlan said. Yes, sir. Flynn raised his bugle to play a short tune, and red-uniformed men came out of the trees all around the camp. Alex counted twenty of them, including Arlen, Flynn, and the sleeping man. She woke the soldier and apologized to him. He accepted the apology, but he seemed very relieved to escape and get back to his companions. She heard his friends laughing with him about sleeping on duty. He laughed along with them, obviously happy to have a good story to tell. Thomas and Michael appeared last with Sandy in tow. Sandy rushed toward her, but Shieri growled a warning and she skidded to a stop. Where the hell have you been? Sandy said, panting with fright at the sight of the huge cat. And what the bloody hell is that? She grinned. Hi, guys. I'm okay. Thanks for asking. This is Shieri, my chosen. That's a familiar, apparently. I am not a familiar, Shieri said indignantly. You are not a hedge witch. Oh, hush, she doesn't know the difference. It seems she is not the only one. You are a daughter of the mother and my chosen. Do not ever forget that or let others tell you different. Sandy blinked in surprise. Well, I... I mean, I guess... Hello? Shieri stepped forward and buried her face in Sandy's crotch. Hey, stop that! Shieri? Alex gasped, embarrassed for her friend. I must gather their scents to remember them. She says that she's memorizing your scent. She won't hurt you. Sandy stopped trying to push Shieri away and waited red-faced while the cat got a good lungful. The cat did the same thing with each of their friends. When she was satisfied, she wandered away to find Douglas. She wondered what he would say when the cat tried the same thing with him. We were worried. Where did you go? Thomas said. We couldn't find you anywhere. I'm fine. I just went for a walk. A walk out here? Sandy said in disbelief. Are you nuts? We just got done burying about a hundred people who probably just went for a walk. It wasn't a hundred. Sandy threw her hands in the air. Who cares how many it was? They're dead and you could have joined them. What's the matter with you? It's dangerous out here. We could have lost you. She couldn't be angry. Without the pendant blocking her friend's thoughts and feelings, it was easy to feel Sandy's fear for her. Before she'd bonded with Shieri, such strong emotion would have overwhelmed her. But she had a measure of control now. The bond buffered and filtered the web, opening possibilities she wouldn't have dared to dream before. She was so very grateful. She wanted to explain to Douglas how she felt and what Shieri meant to her. To them both. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't think about it. I promise I'll be more careful. Sandy hugged her, and she stiffened, expecting bad things to happen. But again, the bond with Shieri stood as a filter between them. It worked as well as the pendant had done to protect her, but without the horrible side effect of cutting her off from the web and her magic. She hugged Sandy back, hard. You're a gift from the goddess, Shieri. That is what being chosen means. Shieri said wryly, but she sounded pleased. I love you, she whispered to Sandy. She raised her voice for the others. I love all of you. Michael smiled. Of course you do. I'm a lovable kind of guy. Thomas didn't speak, but his feelings were obvious, and they troubled her. She had loved him as more than a friend once, but that was long ago. He destroyed what they'd had, destroyed it so thoroughly that he might as well have killed her. He had, in a way, 
she was no longer the same person. Her time in L.A. had changed her, and meeting Douglas had changed her more still. Her bond with Shieri had given her life back to her, and made it possible to pursue her dreams at last. Thomas was the past, and she wouldn't live in the past. They headed for their horses. Why is Arlen here? She said curiously as they joined the bustle. Everyone was in a hurry to mount up. He was sent to escort us to some town up the road, Thomas said. But he admitted he wasn't giving us a choice. He asked where you were. He knew my name? How? No, but he knew we had two women with us. When he saw Sandy, he asked about you. Okay, but he's one of the good guys, right? Thomas shrugged. Right? She said more insistently. I don't know, but Doug hasn't tried to kill him yet, so Arlen can't be that bad. She winced at the sarcasm. It was self-defense. Damn it, Tom. When will you see that he had no choice? Thomas did not answer. She mounted her horse and threaded her way carefully through the milling soldiers toward Douglas. He was on the road already, obviously impatient to be moving. She brought her horse to a stop next to him and felt Shieri shadowing her. The cat was keeping to the trees, downwind of the horses. She didn't need to look. She knew exactly where she was through the bond. Should I be scared? What? He said, startled out of his reverie. No, why? She nodded at the soldiers as they mounted their horses. Are we under arrest? Not arrest, but... He frowned. All right, I admit I don't like being forcibly escorted like this. But Arlen is within his rights. This is Dunmore, not Don Morgan after all. Okay, I can see that. But he didn't just stumble upon us. I bet he doesn't insist on escorting every traveler he meets. So why us? Not every traveler he meets happens to be a duke. And the coronation has been announced. That's why Arlen was in the area and available to escort us. I think, I don't know it for a fact, you realize, but I think the coronation is why Carell did not pursue us after he escaped. No doubt Wallace will want him there to cause mischief. You'll stop him. I'll try, certainly. I shall pay my respects to Henry at Ilsehaven and see what can be done. Who? Henry Moore. Remember I told you that he's Duke of Moore? She nodded. He lives at Dara with the witches. Not with them, but they live there too. Henry is passing through Ilsehaven on his way to the coronation. I'll prevail upon him for funds to take passage down river. With luck, I'll be in Hardenburg before Wallace can carry out his plan. You mean we will take passage? He looked away. What is it? I know there's something wrong. I feel it. Is it Chieri? He shook his head. When we reach Ilsehaven, I'll leave you and the others with Henry. He'll see you safely to Hardenburg. But why? she cried. I don't understand. Have I done something wrong? It's nothing like that, he began, but then resolve hardened his features. You want to know what's wrong? I'll tell you. You slow me down. You and your friends hold me back when I should be halfway to Hardenberg already. He didn't wait for her to scream at him. He urged his horse away from her and joined Captain Arlen. She stared at his back in silence. If Douglas had known she was no longer wearing his pendant, he wouldn't have tried to lie to her like that. But he didn't know. His shield might be strong enough to stop her hearing his thoughts, but it wasn't strong enough to keep such strong emotions from her. She wouldn't tell him that she'd felt his pain as he pushed her away. But she had felt it. He didn't want to leave her behind. That knowledge should have made her happy, but she also knew, despite his real wishes, that he would leave, and she didn't know why. If he wouldn't tell her what was going on, she would have to ask someone who would. 
Henry Moore seemed a likely candidate. She wouldn't let go of her dreams, not now that she'd been given her life back. She sat straighter in her saddle, determination hardening. She would fix this.